Hello everyone, welcome to my chapter one oral presentation of microeconomics, intermediate microeconomics. To start off, my name is Andres Alves. I will be showing you guys a runaround of chapter one as a whole. So chapter one starts off with section 1.1, which is fundamental assumptions about individual preferences. In economics as a whole, there are three major assumptions about preferences that are the most basic building blocks of the theory of consumer choice. At number one, we have completeness. Number two, we have transitivity. And number three, we have more is better. Usually economic models would work if these assumptions are all valid. And we need to know if preferences are complete and transitive. Uh, an example I came around that makes perfectly like sense to for these valid opinions and assumptions. An example, think about a French person that walks into a German convenience store to get anything, nails, wood, and he opens up the catalog and everything is written in German. If the German store owner doesn't let the French person know what is what on the catalog because it's written in a, in a German language, then the French person cannot act based on the theory of the consumer choice. And that's what the assumptions are of individual preferences as a whole. Section 1.2, graphing preferences within difference curves is a, a great section. Individual preferences can be represented by something called an indifference curve, which is here on the slide. We have sandwiches per week and burritos per week. These are all three forms of indifference curves, and as it goes higher and higher, shows more satisfaction of the, of the, of the consumer, the college student. To create an indifference curves, we have to identify the bundles that the college student is indifferent about consuming here. So we have his sandwiches per week, for instance, from Subway, and his burritos per week from Chipotle. There are two good on the axis. On the y-axis, you have the sandwiches, and then on the x-axis, you have the burritos per week here and which is the weekly consumption of the burritos and sandwiches for for the college student each curve on the graph is showing a different form of level of satisfaction that the student has when he achieves the burrito sandwich combo so here he starts off a little a little slow having the satisfaction of eating sandwiches and burritos per week and as the weeks were progressing and getting higher he's you started noticing more satisfaction on the on the indifference curve and then even on the last on the last indifference curve e you see that he has so much satisfaction and it's just gaining it's going higher and higher and not lower on section 1.3 properties of indifference curves there are three major properties that we can never forget about an indifference curve that go as follows they are downward sloping curves they do not cross and they are bowed in for instance, here we have an indifference curve that's valid because it's more is better. This is a great. It, it, this is implying that it's always downward sloping. This is so. This is a valid. When they cross, like here, this is an invalid. And I'll explain why. There are three major points in always remembering about properties of indifference curves, and that is the more is better is always implying. For instance, the section the the second form of ex uh, figure example here is it's always implying that it's downward sloping, which you see here that it is. Then number two, you have transitivity and more is better is implying that indifference curves do not cross. So this is an invalid and the transitivity and more is better is trying to tell you that they do not cross and this is not. So this is an invalid indifference curve. And then you have preference for variety, which also implies that indifference curves are bowed in. Section 1.4, marginal rate of substitution, is a huge, huge uh, topic in, in all of economics, in any form of economics you learn. The MRS is the amount of one good a consumer is willing to give up to get one more unit of another good and maintain the same level of satisfaction. So this is when the MRS deals with delta A and delta B, and where the delta sign, it's indicating a change in the quantity of the good. So he would rather 
for instance, if one week Greg, I will name Greg, the college student, Greg wants to give up a sandwich for more burritos, that's what he's willing to do. And that's what the marginal rate of substitution, he's willing to substitute one one chicken teriyaki Subway sandwich and then slide in a Chipotle burrito. He's willing to give it up. So the MRS is the same as the slope at the indifference curve at any given point along it. Last but not least, we have the last section, which is section 1.5, perfect complements and perfect substitutes. We have that perfect complements are goods that consumers want to consume only in a fixed proportion, not a mixed or any other way. They want it in a fixed way. The perfect substitutes are goods about which consumers yeah, about consumers are indifferent as to consume. You can definitely think of a complement and a substitute as polar extremes of, of preference relations. For instance, this is a perfect example because you have an iPod and you have earbuds. It's a perfect complement because if you want to listen to music by yourself on an iPod and you don't want to use it as a speaker, earbuds are the perfect complement for it because it's your own surround hearing. And you plug in the earbuds to the iPod. It's a perfect complement. You also have a pair of shoes. Shoes are, are another way to, to say that they're perfect complements because they, they're both the same and it goes one and one on each foot. And to finish off, to cap it off, we have we can determine that the consumer behavior of things like this on this graph is definitely from completeness, transitivity, three more is better, and love, love of a variety. So that's why this is definitely a perfect compliment right here. We have an iPod and earbuds. And I just want to say thank you for watching this video. And I hope it was very informative for you guys and professor as well. Um, I really enjoyed making this video for all of you so you guys can learn off me. And thank you for listening and taking the time to watch my video.